Hello, all of my beautiful loves. Okay, so we are back with another video, and today we are absolutely gonna be talking about this little guy up here. Yeah. I just started the video. Must you? Anyway, as I was saying, a little update on my scar. As you can see, my head is totally healed. Well, almost totally healed. At least on the outside, it's healed. On the inside, I'm still having a ton of like nerve. <laughs> Blessings. One moment. <gasps> that was absolutely freaking chaos. There was a guy at the front door who was here to like sell like bug spray stuff like for the like to spray the yard and the dogs are going absolutely insane like <sighs> anyway so back to my scar my scar is looking so much better it's absolutely healed on the outside but on the inside like underneath i'm still all numb right here and pretty much all back here like it there's so much nerve damage that i i don't i mean i guess there's nothing that i can really do for it but like when I go like this, and I need my Botox so bad, but obviously I haven't gotten it because, because I split my head open. That's fine, that's fine, we can wait. Okay, it's fine, it's not a big deal. But when I go like this, it actually hurts. Like I don't even know where it hurts because the nerves are all jacked up. Then when I go like this, it hurts somewhere. I think it hurts back here. No, it hurts, I don't know. I don't know where it hurts. It just like, the nerves are just all haywire in there. They're just haywire. So. I think it just needs more time to heal. I don't know what else to do for nerve damage under the skin like this. I'm sure it'll come back with time, but all the nerve endings are just like starting to like, I guess, recreate all of the different like pathways that I guess I had damaged when I split it open. So um, the actual scar itself doesn't hurt. It actually hurts, like I said, more back here towards like my hairline, which again is like all nerve damage. But I really just quickly wanted to go over and show you guys like, what I've been doing to cover the scar if I were to put my makeup on it. First, I'm going to share with you guys what I use to get it to look as good as it does. I mean, let's face it, it's only been three weeks. It's been literally exactly three weeks today that I split it open. So this is three weeks. You could see my skull. Like literally, you can see my skull. I had 18 stitches and this is what it looks like three weeks later. Like not too shabby in my opinion. So first I'm going to show you guys what I use to help kind of alleviate some of like the actual like scarring. And then I'm going to go over what I've been doing to cover it up like when I actually do my makeup. Because a lot of people I think have that issue with like covering scars or any kind of like, in this goes for any kind of hyperpigmentation. I mean, obviously you guys know I have a birthmark and of course my skin decided to just like break out in this beautiful breakout situation here. But then again, like let's face it, my anxiety, obviously like I pick at my face and I make it worse. So like this one didn't even look that bad this one didn't even look that bad these guys up here what did i do i scratched them open like can you not like what happens on my face is none of my damn business so why do i gotta be going and all picking keep your grubby hands off your face jen okay that goes for all you out there too okay i know i know it's hard but you know anyway i'm gonna show you the products that i'm currently using just the it's literally just just a few things just a few things here that i've been using to or i like to use when i have something that i really need to cover up hyper pigmentation wise what i actually used to get it to heal this quickly was you this is this is insane like i forgot i even had this one of my girlfriends who i do weddings with who does hair hi amy amy if you're if you're watching this hello yes thanks this is thanks to you she works for CeraVe and she gave me this lifetime supply this tub of CeraVe healing or ointment CeraVe healing ointment oh my god it's not ointment ointment CeraVe healing ointment oh my god okay we're moving on so this protects and soothes dry cracked and chafed skin now this is part of the national eczema association so it's great for like eczema and stuff like that but i have to say once i shared on my instagram like how i was using this on my scar people were like that is legit like Oh my god, I thought that was a bug. Okay, it was just makeup <laughs> on my lights. No big deal. Anyway, moving on. They were like, oh my god, that stuff is literally like a miracle in a jar. So I started putting this on literally when I had when I had my stitches taken out. The day I had my stitches taken out, which was literally only five days after I split my head open, I started using this and 
I cannot with how fast this thing healed and like how light it became. I was like, like all of a sudden, all the scabs, like where the stitches were completely fell off and it was just like this light colored skin. And I'm like, oh, okay, I see, I see how we're doing here, okay. This absolutely helped heal this thing literally like tenfold, I, I can't even. So if you have any kind of like stitches, if you like any kind of like wound or anything, Obviously, if things are still open, please listen to your doctor and go by their instructions. Like, I absolutely followed the instructions to a T. I did not get my stitches wet. I, I Chris, literally, the day I split my head open, was in the shower with me, helping me wash all the blood out of my head out of my hair because I couldn't really get this wet. So he had to like hold the shower head, and I had to like hold it. It was. A it was chaos, like I can't, because I couldn't get it wet. And like it could get a little wet, but I was like, absolutely not. Like I'm gonna try to do whatever I can to not get this thing to look any worse than it already does. So I was like, I'm not getting it wet. I'm not putting anything on it, which I obviously, that's what they had said to do. After five to seven days, you can get your stitches out on the fifth day. Like I was, I was straight up at urgent care, like. Let me in, okay, let, let me in. Literally went in, I was like, I need these stitches out. Let's go, let's let's get these stitches out. The physician's assistant who took them out was like, oh, this half really doesn't look like, you know, it could come out yet, I don't know. But she started taking them out. She was like, actually, this is healing really nicely. I'm just gonna take them all out. And I was like, perfect. Because the doctor in the ER said, he's like, the longer you leave in stitches, the worse the scar is gonna get. And I was like, oh, hell no. This is my face we're talking about. And considering that my face is basically a walking billboard for my freaking business, like I need to get, I need to get these out as soon as possible. So on the fifth day, I was like, let's freaking go. Got them taken out and then they told me like, maybe wait another couple of days to put anything on it. But by that night, literally it looked so good. So, and all the scabs were like falling off. So I just put a little bit of this on with like a Q-tip. I never used my fingers. I never touched it because I didn't want any infections. And literally by the next day, all the scabs fell off and it looked like this beautiful pink soft skin. I was like, Okay. Also, on top of the CeraVe, I use the Therapeutic Derma E Scar Gel. Panthenol and Allen Allentoin diminishes visib visibility of scars. So it was this guy here. Now, I had one of my brides from last year text me and she sent me a Derma E product, like a picture of it, and she's like, I use this for scars and it's absolutely f***ing phenomenal. And I was like, girl, God bless, girl. God bless you. I went to Ulta like literally that night. I first of all, I had to like restock my whole kit. And second of all, I started looking for like different things I could put on this to diminish the look of the scar. And I got to the Derma E section. Actually, there was like a kiosk like in the middle of like the aisle. And I saw the Derma E products and I saw scar gel. And I'm like, hey, what's that? That looks intriguing. So I started reading it and I'm like, oh, oh yeah. Yeah, 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 we're, we're doing this. So they didn't have the one that um, my one bride sent me. So I got this instead and I was like, okay, it's the exact same line from Derma E. And I mean, obviously it's a Derma E product and it's a scar gel. So I was like, it's for scars. I'm totally gonna try it. I grabbed this guy and I've been using this along with the CeraVe healing ointment. And I put this on at night. Sometimes I'll put this over top of it. I put this on in the morning, like under my makeup. I've been doing regular skincare as well. Like I'm very careful with my skincare. I only put things that are hydrating on top of it. So anything that has is like anti-aging or um, has like retinol in it or my, uh, my lactic acid peel that I do um, once or twice a week, I do not put over top of this scar. Scar tissue, like when you have a wound and scar tissue starts to build again and create all of those connections, in your epidermis it's just not created equal it's not like regular skin it's extremely thick tight kind of like almost like plasticky skin because it's just your body's way of like creating these connections in that epidermis again so the skin on a scar is absolutely not created the same as like it's not gonna be the same as your regular skin I wanted to be extremely careful I want to give it a few months before I even start putting any kind of like anti-aging on it again or like doing any kind of scrubs on it it, it, when I do my like dermabrasion in the shower, 
um, I absolutely stay away from it. I literally just started to go over it with, like, with my face brush that I use every night in the shower to cleanse my face. I literally just started using that on top of it. Um, but I'm really just being extremely gentle with it. I do not want to do any more damage while all the skin is starting to like create its own connections and pathways again. And I'm like, I'm not trying to screw with my body's own natural way of healing. So I'm being just like so mindful of it. So why I wait for like, obviously I think it's going to lighten up more, but I feel like, I don't know. I feel like it's a little pinkish, but again, like scar tissue is obviously going to be pinkish at first. And I feel like that will diminish over time, but I'm still keeping like a ton of things away from it. I'm only doing hydrating things. And obviously like these two things, I'm just going to really quickly cover this up with a couple of things. I already did my skincare this morning i didn't put either one of these guys on just yet i literally just spit all over my camera like can can i not like what going to do like a full face of makeup but i'm just going to do the face makeup to show you guys like the actual coverage of this scar here and also all of my breakouts and my birthmarks and my freaking moles and freckles and blah. I, I literally can't with my face right now. So um, I just did my skincare this morning. There are no primers or anything on my face. We're just going to go straight in with all of the makeup. Should I go through the products now or should I? No, we're just going to go through the products as we do it. So I'm going to adjust the camera, get you guys a little bit closer and we're going to get started. Making sure that we're nice and focused. As you can see, I have some breakouts. The scar doesn't look too terrible, but um, yeah, and I definitely cut a freaking chunk out of my eyebrow the other day when I was trimming them. So blessings to me. I personally, oh God, this is like almost gone already. My Kosas like, concealer, look at it, it's like halfway gone already. I'm going to start with the Kosas concealer. Of course, everything is going to be listed for you guys down below. I um, will link it and that's all I have to say about that. I don't know, I don't know where, I'm, where I was going with that. What I like to do is, there's nothing on here. I like to just do a couple dots of concealer. I'm going to show you guys why I love this concealer so freaking much. And of course, this video is not sponsored by Kosas, but I'm going to be using... So I'm going to be talking up some real Kosas right now. Okay, like, can we not please? I freaking love this concealer. I I didn't get what the hype was all about until I until I tried it. And I was like, mm, huh, this is really good. No wonder why everyone loves it. I do concealer first sometimes and not foundation. I know that's not what, like, everyone does. But it was the way I was taught. So I always do my concealer first. Sometimes I do my concealer second. I don't know. It depends on what freaking mood I'm in that day. Okay, so, like, can we not please? Okay, it doesn't freaking matter just put your makeup on why i love this concealer so much is not only are the pigments amazing in it but it is so freaking hydrating also it's a clean product at sephora it's sephora it's vegan paraben free all the all the chemical free cruelty free all that good stuff so i absolutely love it and it just kind of like blends in so amazingly like meh. so i'm just gonna take my anisa angled uh, concealer brush and I am actually just going to start pressing so scar tissue isn't again created equal it kind of almost becomes like this smooth texture I guess you can say it's not like your regular skin where like oh my god how do I want to explain it I don't know but it's just a lot smoother and like it's almost like plasticky there's a, definitely a chance for makeup to kind of like slide off of it a little bit more than like your regular skin for me when I'm working with a scar I like to press I'm not gonna swipe because even though you shouldn't be swiping at all on your face unless you just definitely want to move the product around you always want to be pressing especially on top of scars because again that there's a chance that, that makeup could absolutely look at that look at that already like I freaking can't are you kidding me um that makeup can absolutely slide off of like the scar tissue a lot easier than your regular skin oh my god i can't feel this like it's the weirdest thing all right let me just press this all in of course i love this brush as well i have a discount code with anisa it's gen 15 I have to check on that. But uh, I do have a discount code. I'll put it down in the description box or on screen here. You can still see those spots a little bit. I don't mind if you see a spot. I don't really care. Honestly, I'm not trying to cake on all the makeup where it's like caked onto like an actual zit or like a scab because it's just going to look even more textured. I like to keep it as thin as possible and just diminish it as much as possible. Not like throw all of this freaking makeup on top of it. Like I just, I'd rather buy a product that is a little bit more expensive and is known for the higher pigment count than to pile like multiple 
products on top of it. So I'm just gonna do under my eyes real quick. Just press this all in. I'm gonna stop right at this crease here so that I don't start creasing under my eye. I mean, sometimes things get in there and that's fine. It's not a big deal. Any excess, I'm just gonna take onto my eyelid. This spot over here, as you can see, again, I'm just pressing and as I press, it's just kind of like, the, it's spreading the product out and heating it up and it's really just adhering to those pores really easily. The best thing about this concealer too is that it's so easy to blend. Like, literally anyone can use this concealer and blend it out. So I'm just gonna do, I had like this like little spot on my nose. I'm gonna do the other eye, just to brighten under the eyes. I do a, like a little dot on the outside, a little dot on the inside. That's all that you need. I'm just gonna take any excess up onto my eyelid. I love this brush, by the way. This brush is just amazing. I do do this part of my birthmark back here, just to kind of, cause this is like the darkest part of it back here. And it always makes it look like I don't know how to match my foundation. However, I do know how to match my foundation. Thank you very much. Mm, mm -mm. Nope. And then there's this guy. I'm just gonna kind of press this all around. Sometimes I do, I like to kind of go in circles and press and spread it out and thin it out a little bit. There's too much. And then I'm gonna, that was attractive. Now, if you have a scar or any kind of hyperpigmentation that's like really red, obviously you wanna use, you can use a green corrector underneath. For me, if I were to, if mine were like really red, I would probably do like a little bit of a green corrector mixed in with my concealer. I don't, again, I don't like to layer a ton of products on top. As long as I know that something has a higher pigment count, I'm just gonna use that. Like you guys can't, look at that, you can't even tell. Like you can see that it's a little bit brighter, but for the most part, like you can't even see it. Once you have like your foundation on, um, and maybe like a little bit of like a powder with a pigment in it, you should be good. But if it's like super, super red, absolutely just throw a little tiny bit of like a green concealer on top elf has some really great ones i think maybelline was it maybelline like you can get drugstore brand and only use a tiny bit of it and you it will last you forever because you really don't need to use it like a ton so i am just going to shake up my foundation you can use whatever foundation you want i'm going to list a few down below but for today i'm going to be using the la mercier this is the real flawless weightless perfecting foundation so this has i I think this has a little bit of like a silica in it. I don't know what this has in it, but it's literally a flawless foundation. Like I freaking love it. Another one of my favorites is Double Wear from Estee Lauder. Oh, love that foundation. But today I'm gonna be using this, especially cause I'm a little bit pale. And I definitely want to, uh, my Dove Wear is a little bit darker, so I want to get a little tan before I use that one. So <laughs> a couple drops on the back of my hand. I'm going to let it warm up using the My Kit Co. Um, this is just like their stapling, stapling, stippling brush. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just going to take a little bit and I'm just going to kind of start pressing this in certain areas. I'm going to start letting it heat up on my face and I'm not going to do any on top of the scar first. No. Yeah. Did, did I say that right? I'm not going to do any on top of the scar just in general, not first. I don't know why I said that. And then once I kind of have it like evenly distributed throughout my face, I'm just going to start pressing. I love the My Kitco brushes. You guys know I love these freaking brushes. And I'm just going to kind of if you need to move your product around, that's when you want to start swiping. I kind of go like this. But if you just want to press it into the skin, you absolutely just want to literally be pressing it into the skin. Try not to give a swipe with it. I don't even know. Sometimes like when I start talking on camera, I'm like, what the f are you even saying, Jen? Like, what? What? I, I don't know. Why can't I talk right? Like, I talk pretty normal not on camera so why can't i talk normal on camera is it like nerves like no one's here with me my husband's not even home oh my god i cannot i personally love using brushes versus sponges i will go in with a sponge later like after i have everything kind of like all over but for the most part i really just like to use brushes i'm just gonna press lightly over top of my scar i do want a tad bit more on my forehead so i'm gonna just do one more little baby pump and I'm just going to throw this on top now this is a full coverage for your scar or like hyperpigmentation whatever I just wanted to give you guys an update on what I've been doing for full coverage reasons you don't have to cover your scar wear that scar glad and proud I wear all the all the time okay all the time I ain't be covering it all the time get the hell out of here I cannot feel this this is like the weirdest thing ever to not be able to feel a brush on your head for the most part though like I don't even cover it. this is just like if I were to go out somewhere if I were to this looks really pale but I promise you it's not gonna look that bad like I promise you okay it's gonna look normal I only do this routine when I need to like if I have a event I'm going to if I want to do a full time a full a full time really a full coverage uh routine 
like you don't have to do a full coverage routine. You can absolutely just use a tinted moisturizer, just a concealer, just a little bit of powder, like whatever you feel comfortable with. It doesn't matter. Just wear it loud and proud. Who cares? I'm just going to be pressing this all in with a sponge now. Damn, I am really freaking pale. Like, can we not? Oh my God. Look at my hairline. Press, press, press. This foundation though, like it goes on a little funky. And then as soon as it heats up and adheres to your pores, it becomes this like flawless foundation. And I'm like, oh, okay. All right. Well, <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. You're supposed to wet your sponge before you use it. Using anything wet on the face, like you do not want it soaking, drenching wet. Like you just want it damp. Any kind of like wet water is going to, what the hell with my hair? Start breaking up the makeup. You can take your concealer brush too. And instead of using like a stippling brush, if it's too big and you see it starting to separate on that like scar tissue, just take your concealer brush and just lightly press. I cannot see the little screen on top of my freaking camera. Next up, we're gonna just use a little bit of powder to start kind of like setting things in place. So I, I, okay, okay, disclaimer here. First of all, I have multiple setting powders now because the one from Givenchy that I always use, I've had this for literally like four or five years now, and it's not the right color. It's like the cool color. Look how much I have left too, like I can't. But this is the um, Mousseline Pastel. So it's like a super like cool tone and I'm just not cool toned. So I, I am going to still like try to use it, but I then got the house labs, uh, powder from the Sephora sale and I do like it, but I was at the cosmetic company store the other day, which is Estee Lauder's like outlet store. And, uh, they had the La Mer, the powder. And if you know anything about La Mer, Oh, Oh, it is like Estee Lauder's like top tier like skincare makeup line and it's just like oh it is french and it is beautiful and it is freaking expensive okay it is expensive but but disclaimer i went to an outlet store do you see all this powder everywhere so that means i got it on sale so this is probably about a hundred some dollars around there but i got it for like 40 50 i don't know but We'll talk about the cosmetic company store another day, but I got the La Mer powder and I have to say I'm mildly obsessed with it. I use way too much. But anyway, first of all, it comes with this puff that I'm never going to use because it's so freaking cute. It looks like a little baby animal in my powder thing. And uh, it's like, it's like old fashioned puff too. Oh, I can't. I just did a little bit on the lid. Does not have a fragrance, which is good. You know you have a good powder when it's so silky and soft because it's been milled over like multiple times. So the grains of powder and pigment that are in there are just like, oh my God, they're so small. Oh, oh I love that. I'm gonna use just a little bit of powder, a little bit of powder on the end of my concealer brush. Make sure I don't have any creases and I'm just gonna start setting like under my eyes, my eyelids, um, any places where I had like extra concealer. I'm just gonna start to set. Now this powder also has a little bit of mica in it. So it has like a little bit of like a, like a shimmery flawless kind of finish. And I'm like, mm, yeah, sign me up. Mm -hmm. Say less. Say less. See where like I'm kind of oily? So let's just kind of take a little bit. Look at it. And it just kind of like disappears. Oh, goodbye. Good freaking bye. Look how smooth that is. And I'm just actually going to take it over top of my scar. Like I'm barely taking any on my brush, guys. Like not a lot. And I'm just going to set around my scar. My scar, scar. Scarlet. That's what I'm going to name her. My scar is Scarlet. <laughs> That's clever. I'm an idiot. And then anywhere that I like... I know I get extra oily or anywhere that I had extra uh, concealer. Anything that has like a, like when you get oily, it's gonna show more texture. So like if you use like a highlighter, anything with like crazy amounts of like shimmer, mica, whatever in it, it's going to show more, like the amount of mica in this powder isn't, no, like you don't have to worry about that. But if you were to use like a highlighter, highlighters are always gonna bring out, like if you have larger pores or fine lines, always going to bring out texture so just keep that in mind when you are doing your makeup and then let me just do my eyelids just press any creases in take a little bit here oh yes oh my god there's freaking... believe it or not i am this pale <laughs> lovely
like we are gonna go in with a powder that has a pigment in it now so I'm gonna use the makeup forever this is the HD skin matte velvet powder mine of course got wet so it started to do this little John here I just got to scratch it off we'll do that later so I'm gonna use the bottom portion here and I'm gonna use the my perfect powder from my Kit Kat. absolutely amazing brush I love it I love this brush this powder let me tell you something oh my god it is it is a powder it's a powder let me tell you and i'm just going to work this in and remember we're pressing we're not swiping and this is just going to give you do not have to do all of these steps this is just what i do when i want like full fuller coverage and i'm gonna do like a contour and stuff too like i'm gonna put some blush on like i'm not gonna be looking like a ghost right now like i can't any kind of like foundation powder is gonna put a little bit more pigment back into um, your skin as well granted my lights are extremely bright so I feel like it always takes the color out of me but you know it is what it is I set over top of that guy guys I had a full box of brushes that had been sitting like in the box dirty um for literally like a couple years yeah I can't believe I'm admitting this on the internet right now but um yeah I had probably about Oh my god like 75 to 100 brushes just like sitting in this cardboard box and i they're not the ones that i use every day obviously they had been sitting there because like i just threw them in there because i have so many brushes and i found so many that i was like oh my god i completely forgot that i had these brushes so i actually spent like two hours cleaning brushes the other day and some of them i had to throw out because like they were just so freaking disgusting but um some of them actually made it out and i forgot that i purchased the scott barnes um like set of brushes like he had like a sale like years ago and i got them for a really good price so i my like Ooh, my brush thing now is like completely full of like all my brushes and they're all clean and like actually not all of them are even clean all the way i still have like these huge ones that I still have to do and like little baby ones that I have to do. But yeah, I cleaned so many freaking brushes the other day. Like I, I cannot. And like they're all my personal ones. My professional ones get cleaned every single time I do someone's face. So like literally they're used once and then shampooed. But I definitely forgot all about these brushes. So I'm cool. I'm on PR list. One of the PR lists that I'm on is like my brush company, my Kit Kat. They have sent me brushes before and I am beyond freaking grateful. I'll never understand how... I got PR for my Kit Kat. Like I will, it'll never register in my brain, but I have over 250 My Kit Kat brushes and the majority of them are for my professional kit. Like I have maybe 20 to 25 that are my own personal. The rest are all professional. So I went through this box and I had to throw so many away, but I kept my Scott Barnes ones, my Anissa ones, obviously, um, my Kit Kat and my Rose and Ben ones, and then like a few other randos. Um, oh, and my Jessup Beauty ones, but like, I was like, holy crap, I have all these brushes, and I have to clean them all, and I finally did, so. I don't know really why I decided to tell you this story, but I guess because I'm using my Scott Barnes, this is the number 66, so it looks like this. It lo actually looks like my Rose and Ben one, so it's very, very, oh, it's like basically the exact same thing. <laughs> So I love these brushes um, to be honest the Scott Burns ones are really nice um, But I just genuinely love this style of brush I don't know if Scott Barnes still has his but I will absolutely link the Rose and Ben ones down below her brushes are also amazing so I'm just gonna kind of throw a little bit of contour back into my face just to kind of give me some color and kind of like blend in my hairline because I'm so pale on my face freaking scalp but like obviously i have more color on my face like uh. i'm just using my gucci bronzer what the hell why can't i like actually blend my makeup today why is it looking like an actual like it's not right now and then obviously over top of your scar anywhere like if you have pigment like a contour or blush or whatever eyeshadow brow color just make sure that you're pressing over top of it and not swiping because you don't want to move any of that makeup over top I just really want to look like a human today to be completely honest <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah much much better I don't know it must be the light why does it look oh maybe not oh damn it oh, oh. I just put myself in the eye oh my god ow oh hell oh hell I do not know why my this one side looks like extra chunks i look very chunky today why am i looking so chunk chunkified i don't know 
I also love that. I also love that word, chunkified. This is the My Defining Contour. So it looks like this. It's nice and fluffs. It's fluffalicious. Oh, I'm coming up with some good words today, boo. I'm going to take this brand new, very nice looking Chanel blush. <laughs> Do you think I need a new Chanel blush? I don't know. Just, just my thoughts. But I don't want to throw it away because I'm like, you can still get some now. And it's not cheap. Chanel products are not cheap. However, I love this blush. Look at it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely... I definitely need a new freaking Chanel blush. But whatever. This is shade... Is this... Yeah, rose bronze. It's literally the perfect shade of blush for me. And I'm just like... Mm. Yeah, I guess I'll I guess I'll take it. It's a little bit on the forehead, a little bit on the nose. Ah, yeah. mm -hmm. I'm everyone like has been putting their blush like up here, and I, I've always done that. But like I, I'm like a I'm like an old fashioned rouge kind of like blush girly. Like I like to smile and do the apples with my cheeks because like I like my cheekbones and like the structure of my face. So I'm like, why am I gonna? No, I wanna I want these to come out. Like I wanna be like, hi. While we're, while we're doing the Chanel thing, might as well get out this also very brand new hitting pan on this one too. Highlighter from Chanel, which is also absolutely freaking beautiful. And I'm just going to throw a little bit here and a little bit her. <laughs> I'm not going to like do my brows or anything. I'm just going to curl my lashes real quick because like I'm just going to be sitting by the computer and doing work all day. But like whatever. Like, what have. So I'm just going to curl my lashes real quick. I'm not going to put any kind of, like, mascara on again. I'm just going to be working all day and, like, editing and doing stuff for work. So I'm just going to curl them a little bit. And I'm not even going to do anything with my brows. Even though I took a freaking chunk out of this one. Like a jackass. There we go. Oh, my God. I've been, like, pulling my eyelashes out. Like, that's, like, my new thing that I like to do is, like, pull my eyelashes out. Like, and I stopped using the lash serum that I use, which I'm absolutely obsessed with. Like, I swear by my lash serum. Um, and I stopped using it because sometimes I just, I like to stop and then start again. And it kind of, like, continues to work. And, like, my lashes are so freaking short. Oh, my God. Maybe I will put some mascara on. Hold on. A little bit of mascara from um, Maybelline. I have the Sky High mascara and so far i'm really liking it like it's it's pretty nice it's not my favorite brush for the most part i i like i like and i honestly just grabbed it the other day because i was like i just want to try a maybelline mascara again i don't know just kind of miss it i miss the mabes i miss old mabes old mabel i just i just miss her i used to swear i still swear by maybelline mascaras i use the maybelline great lash in my kit and it's all i literally ever freaking use so i'm like mm mm-hmm yeah, I swear by it. All right, let me move you guys back out a little bit so you, I'm not all close and personal. All right, let's take a look at this scar. Um, beautiful, beautiful. You, of course, are going to see texture. So my scar is uneven. So this back part kind of goes a little little forward and bumps up a little higher than this front portion here so you are always going to see the light the light is just going to hit it it's not you it's just like the different light that you're in that it um may show a little bit more than other lights but um for the most part like yeah i can't even see it like for me i can't even see it like i again i see the light difference but other than that like i mean obviously it's something that happened that i can't avoid and i can't fix so what do we do we accept it and we move on with our lives because seriously it could have been so much worse or i could have died so i'm like you know what i'm just gonna i'm just gonna keep on keeping on i'm grateful for this i can hide it it looks amazing and um it's healing so nicely minus all the nerve damage like That'll go away soon too. I just got to give it time. Time heals all. And um, yeah, but I'm obsessed with this. I love it, love it, love it. My skin looks amazing. Yeah, so that is how I cover my scar. I, of course, will be listing all of the products that I use today down below. Um, plus, I may include a couple other ones that maybe I suggest if maybe um, something doesn't work for you. Remember, you can always return it and maybe try something else. So, if uh, you guys have any favorite products that you use to cover any kind of like scars, hyperpigmentation, birthmarks, whatever, please let me know and share it in the comments so we can kind of like all learn from each other. And uh, yeah, that's how I would cover my scar. That's how I have been covering my scar when I want to do a full coverage face. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope it was helpful. If you guys have any questions at all, as always, please leave them down in the comments. Always remember to subscribe and give a thumbs up to this video. And um, until next time, I will see you later. Bye guys.